scissors, brushes, sponges, you name it. Fun! Fun! And more fun! And even more fun! Lots of fun! So I'm going to slap paint on here and really enjoy myself with the knives at first and then work my way through again. From the cement trowel and the cake slice and then the brushes and the uh, sponge rollers and so on. And just literally enjoy myself working up very abstractly. So several uh, techniques but the main method being the peat wood method, the jigsaw method. Put the right shapes in the right places with the right colours relevant one to another and it doesn't matter what style you're using this method will allow this painting to turn into a figurative painting and you start loose but you can finish tight. So peatwood method, jigsaw method, start loose, finish as tight as you want. You can thoroughly enjoy your painting that way and that way it's never a figurative illustration. It's always a lovely loose abstract piece that gradually develops and you can explore and experiment. Well I've just been out to a local art group to infuse them with uh, different techniques and methods and so on and uh, it went very well and we enjoyed each other's company and I've been invited back to do a workshop there so now I'm back home I can get into this painting. One of my favourite articles that I'd like to wear when I'm painting is a fisherman's smock. I have a nice brown one in France, an old traditional red brown. This is a blue one as you can see and the beauty of these is that uh, they're warm in the winter and cool in the summer but nice and easy going and comfortable. Two pockets here, keep my hands warm if I'm outdoors. Put a hat on and this one away. And you can just wipe your hands on here and don't worry about getting into a mess. So a, sm a fisherman's smock from Devon, not too expensive and they make a good artist smock. So let's make a start on this big acrylic painting then shall we? And really enjoy ourselves and have some great fun loosening up with the trowels and the knives and the rollers and uh, splashing colour around. So I've got my palette of paints down there, stay wet palette that I made myself, mixing tray, trowels, sponges, all the accoutrements I require, brushes. Over there, spare paints ready to go if I need to use them direct from the tubes, I probably will. So where should we start on this? All these lovely purple greys and things going on and blues and parts, mixing up these colours and I'm going to um, use the medium trowel first of all and uh, Use the bigger trowel as I go on, maybe um, putting paint on there with a smaller knife. So what I'm going to use first of all is my cake making trowel and a um, painting knife and just put the paint, rather than trying to scoop it all out of there, put the paint onto the edge of this blade and then bring it on to a two-part phase really. And if we start up in the sky here with these lovely mauve greys, we've got some colours here that we're actually ready to use. This one for instance. Now I can take that and I'm not able to add that almost straight onto the canvas. Just take some there and we'll just whack it straight up as it is, almost the same colour. Just to get started with that painting knife. Doesn't need to be a very big knife for this job at the moment. I'll have a bigger knife later. And start to mix some colours as well. There's some quite subtle colours amongst these and I don't want to stick to things exactly as they are in the um, Photograph by any means. I want to go a bit darker here. I'll take a bit of a bit more purple into that. Mix it up. I can use a bigger knife when I need to later. Just get these colours the point. Some beautiful colours here. Get some of them a bit pinker. And let these effects as the knife goes across. Don't try and smooth it all out. We're not after that. We're, we're trying to use light watercolour. We're trying to use the the accidental effects that are coming on here as well. Add more colours, I'm going to add some um, Russian blues to that colour now. That's what that does for us. I'm just trying to get various colours out. I'll experiment with them up here. Magenta into it. And I'm not going to totally mix them, partially mix them. Prussian blue. And I'm going to add it across the knife here now. So that's the bit of the blade I'm going to use. So I'll take these colours and add them across the edge of this blade here. And we'll see what we get doing this big old blade like this. Uh, got them here. Yep. Got a nice big blade. And a different effect again to what we were just getting. The lump of paint is quite nice. I want to lose the white canvas, so let's say we want to get effects that we can't get any other way this way. These lovely slabs of paint, and I've got to also consider just where I want texture to be as well. 
add colours and take them away as I want to put into wet or when it dries, wet over dry of course. Got some more paint slapping in here, plenty of it. This is a good base colour for these at the moment, get rid of this top, put the tube out of the way. Some of these lighter bluey greys are happening through here, up here for instance, on this edge. As I say, it's lovely just to get these effects that you can't get with a brush in the same way. And the text goes up. You see, I'm pushing the knife against the paint slightly now, and as I lift away, I'm letting it come out roughly, more texturally through here. As I say, it doesn't matter if you don't totally mix things because we can get these effects of colours mixing as they go on. Right through that bit there. More texture going on as it comes round. Not any white canvas left. Ought to be to get rid of that. We play the rough against the smooth. It is a lovely light blue colour down here, so I'm going to go back to my smaller knife again and look at um, mixing that up so that white and a wee bit of cerulean, I think. Let's see what colour we can get. White cerulean, a bit of yellow into it. Yellow ochre now. That mix. Some more golden yellow. Put it down a bit. See if we start finding these lovely white yellow. More yellow ochre into there. That same mix. And a wee touch of green. A little bit of emerald into it. It's coming across that surface. Lovely colours, just really enjoy myself here. Comes down right through there, and mixing into those colours a bit more there. I'll just texture that round into there rather than um, lay it on. I'm going to texture it in. But the main thing is to just have fun. I mean, I'm painting my usual uh, methods here. I'm painting with all the different uh, colour hues and I'm just putting hopefully the right shapes in the right places gradually. Turquoises, turquoise blues, greens going on. I even have to bring a great big blade across in a minute and just try that out a bit. Just there, road. Need to find that pure ultramarine. A bit of blue going on in there. Really building up. A bit of cobalt maybe into that. I don't have to overwork it either. Um, just getting it right, isn't it? paint on, um, but what can I go, how can I go wrong, otherwise all I have to do is paint over it if I don't like it. Right colours, right shapes, right places, and 
even if we're only given the impression, look at these lovely effects we can get of mountains and uh, Any time we can come back to this and make it work into the paint while it's still wet. And this sort of scene lends itself to this way of working in this medium. Uh, we want to choose the best medium and method for the subject. Sienna, Prussian blue, some more red, and warmth, and crimson. Down here. Get some chrome we will mix it with that mix. No idea where this is going to go, so you know when you're doing a painting like this it's nice just to flow freely and see where it all happens really. Got to lose these bits of white canvas I'm just showing here and there. Get so involved with these big blocks of colour you sometimes forget. Later that's a blue mess, it may work at this stage. Oh, anything goes. I'm going to have to put some more colour out of it. I need to. So, what I'm trying to do is just find. No, I'm nowhere near. We'll get it in a moment. It's got a long way to go. Sometimes things just work, and you know, you do them and they're finished. Other times you've got to work on them for ages and let them dry and rework, and then come in again and mess about. I haven't used the roller yet, so I want to come back and play around with the roller in the sky here as well. And just smooth out some of these areas a bit more. We've had big brush techniques and now we're playing with big knife techniques. Now get this covered then uh, we can start to work. I want to go just a bit here, I just want to slightly smooth the colours, slightly smooth the results in places. Use the roller to just link some of these lines together. Come down here now and make a, a base coat for here. I want to be pretty quick on that, so I'm going to take my great big trowel and uh, let's see which side of the trowel I'm going to use this side of the trowel. So we'll pile up. We want a, a nice medium light blue. I'm going to put a bit of paint out now. Pile it along the edge of my blade, all the way along here. I'm never going to pick this up from the palette with a big blade like this. That's not the way I'm painting, so I'm going to do it this way. And um, we'll add some Cerulean into that. So they'll go on together. Let's just see how we get on with that. Yeah, great. This is the life. So we've been painted around like this. To hell with all the rules and regulations. Let's just get things working. Work 
three verticals in first with water and then the horizontals afterwards. Start looking at one colour, cool colours against warmer colours, and it's going to start dragging across the little more purple across this lovely rich, the deeper greens I've got here just to really start to try and find this background. Trees a bit more here. So I'm now take my roller and go across there with the roller. If we can get the effects we want using the roller. Across there, there we go. Bring some lights into there shortly. Get a bit more curl work at the moment. Let's roll around the knife in a minute. Let's just find these correct colours. Almost done enough for the first layer for today, I think. Almost go away now and have a little break. Oh, it's more yellowy, greeny yellowy colour there. Let's just see if I can mix that before we stop today. If I can get this right, correct greeny, and a bit of yellow, a bit of more and yellow, and get that same blue and just see if it's anything like what I need. It may be too yellow. Let's just try and see. Far out, it's far out at all. It's a lovely play between the figurative and the abstract that I want to keep. Look at all the yellow going on in the sky there that I want to get as well. Let's see if I can just get that curl yellow into that and take it down a bit up here. Very light sort of yellow pink going on as well. Well, well there's some wonderful colours on this, I can just find them. Yes, it's coming in below, it's there, it's coming in below the... I want to use a knife for this, I'd rather use this technique, just, just dropping in gently with the... Comes up and across here, it's quite strong just here. through here, down and goes through into there against that, through down here. Light just coming through, shining through here, as if it's just coming down onto that side of that field. Right, so just a bit more of this pink on, just here and there where we need it to catch the light. Coming in and around these trees and things here. So you can see why I named this uh, painting the carpet effect from the beginning now. I'm well into this now. Um, it suddenly has taken shape now. I think I'll leave that for the evening. I'll come back to it tomorrow when it's dry and work some colours over the top. Hmm? So we're just about done enough for now, I think.
So there we are at the end of the first afternoon. Well here we are then at the end of the first afternoon. Basic colours are all on. We've got the differences in the trowel, different trowel textures and the um, sponge roller. I haven't used the brushes yet. May do so. Well, another morning dawns and we're back onto this painting. I think we've got a lot more to do. Um, I'm not unhappy with it as it is. Uh, we've got the bits of snow to bring out on the mountain. I'm going to overdo those. So a little bit of white there. And it's whether I use a brush or whether I use the roller. I prefer to have the texture of the roller but we might have to use a brush. Um, and there's just one or two little bits of, of warmth to bring out. A little bit more warmth just there. Uh, on, the, on the mountain. don't think we need to do a lot more there. I'm not unhappy with this as it is. So we'll just try and finish this off now. I've got another big one to do. And let's start with um, the mountain itself. And I just want to use a, sort of very, very, just slightly off-white there. Um, take my palette knife and just wondering whether to use a palette knife or a brush. Let me just try with a brush first of all. I'll take a small filbert because I want a rounded edge for this to be a bit more detailed and I just want to use a little bit of very very light turquoise and white just just slightly off off white the, the, the light blue will be will shine out here hopefully and we'll just tip onto some of this snow here just bring out the edges of it to see if we can don't overdo it but Subtly coming through here, just glazing it over here basically. I just want to use a slightly dry brush technique just, just to hint at the snow. So I'm going to the brush a little bit drier, take some of the paint off, just get the feel of the texture over there. If I, if I work over the surface of these bits of texture I've got, it should give me the effect I want. And we'll build it up in the cools first, and I might add a little bit of cream in a minute. Just to pick out <coughs> these highlights of snow. So we've used the knives, we've used the roller, <coughs> we've used sponges. And again we're talking about colour hues again here. I'm going a little bit lighter with them as I go along. they come down here. Now I'm going to make a very light cream and uh, just a little bit of lemon yellow and white, ever such a small amount of lemon yellow and the white, just to try and pick out a little bit of the sunlight across, across these here. And it should make a lot of difference to this. See what's happening there now. Just gives it a lovely brilliance. A bit more white into there. A bit, little bit more white here and there. Just, just down here. See some of these. Coming down there on that. You see how we can play the warm against the cool to give that sort of brilliance to it. As the light just cascades down through here. That's probably about it. That's all we're going to need. I think we're about there on that. Now, there's an area of warp just down here. So it's not to bring out. And maybe a, a wee touch of burnt sienna down there. I'll put a little bit of it in here, but Bits of burnt sienna, maybe even a slight touch of cafe orange. I'm going to take a bit of both, a little bit of uh, magenta into it. If you don't get the colour quite right, these, these are very important. These little bits of the compositions are important that we haven't quite got. And I, I think we're almost there, you know. Sign that one and move on to the next biggie. Even the colour for choosing the colour for the uh, Signature is difficult. No, I think that works all right. I'll leave it at that. The coat of varnish, how that looks. Right. See how the picture changes as we get some varnish onto it, which should bring out the 
depth of cover a lot more. Being a water-based varnish, it means I can still touch it up. Well, there we are, then on to the next one. And uh, take a still shot of this now, to get a, a clearer picture of it. <laughs> 